Thanks for listening to the Women Emerging podcast. Every week we put up a new episode with insights into leadership, practical leadership, seen through the eyes of women leaders of all ages and all sectors from right across the world. Our aim is for women to be able to say, if that's leadership, I'm in. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and join Women Emerging on our website, womenemerging.org. That's womenemerging.org for more fabulous free leadership content. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Julia Middleton here, Women Emerging Director and your podcast host. Two weeks ago, we started talking about leading. Leading being about energy, about creating, about generating energy. Overwhelmingly, the the verb leading is about generating energy. Two weeks ago, Liz introduced us to this concept and, and really covered the bases and then handed on the baton to Alia, who talked last week about how we manage energy, our own and other people's, the energy in the room, the, the sort of microclimate that we create in the room. And this week, Sarah's going to pick up the baton from Alia. And she's going to talk about energy in a slightly different way of what happens when energy almost gets out of control when it becomes a problem? What are the things that you need to watch out for when you start leading and you start creating energy? What are the things that go to your head? What are the things that start to control you? How can you get it wrong and lose a sense of what the leading or the generating of energy was ever about? And certainly losing the sense of connection with your essence. Essence, as we, as we talked about it over those seven episodes before we started on energy, essence being who we are and how that shows up in our leadership leadership. There you are, I'm slipping, going back to that word leadership with the emphasis on ship, a heavy big ship. We're preferring to use the word leading, the verb, the action, the energy. But certainly when the energy sort of loses contact with the essence of who we are, that I think accelerates where things begin to go wrong. But anyhow, I leave it to Sarah to to talk through some of these dead ends that we so desperately need to avoid as we create energy, energy for change. Sarah, you're going to help us figure this one out. Talk to us about, (laughs) talk to us about energy when it's really flowing and Mm. what can go right and what can go wrong. I love the idea as you posited it a little bit of of energy flowing both that we can accumulate it and that it has both powerful energy when harnessed and when when targeted that can be incredible both in in what you're trying to achieve and how you're using it but also the what does it look like when you actually don't harness it well uh, what are the effects when you when you don't do it and i think i've been thinking a lot about that. And part of the the thing that I kind of was thinking about for myself was, what are the ways in which I've seen it go sideways? What's actually happening? What are those components that are part of it? And I kind of was thinking about it the other day. And I think there's kind of four ways that I've seen it, or it's been used, that energy, which ultimately can be when, when collected and when generated, right, is that influence and that what is often thought about as power, authority. And I think one of the ones that, and mostly I would say mostly in self-reflection, one of the ways is, is, is what I kind of think about is unchecked, unexplored energy and power, right? When you kind of deny that you have it. In some ways that is incredibly dangerous. One, because of the ways in which you can influence and use rooms because you often have power, but not denying that you're having it, right? You're changing the ways in which you're interacting with people and how people respond to you, right? So I'll give a good example. This was a big eye-opener for me. 
in the more recent past, I've moved into a new position where I have a lot more positional power. <laughs> I have a lot more because of the network and the energy and the ways in which I operate. I have a lot more clout that for me, I was still the same person that was able to meet people and have lunch and talk about their family. And so I really didn't explore for myself what it meant to have this 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 power and unchecked. And so I realized that through interactions really quickly that people showed up differently because I all of a sudden had this positional power over them and the ways in which I interacted. If I was the first one to speak with an idea that I genuinely thought like, oh, I have an idea um, and put it out first, I changed the trajectory of how meetings with my team would actually show up. People would try to make in some instances, even if my idea was was terrible, they try to make it a little bit better. And so being able to actually understand the positional power, be able to understand the energy that I hold within rooms and how I enter and actually be able to to really define for myself what is that my own essence, what is my grounding, what is that that ways in which I show up and how am I using that power in, in good ways or bad ways um, was really a big eye opener for me for for that and the importance of being able to, to check your power. I think the second That's way that I... Before yeah. we go to the next one, that's really interesting because in a way that your example is, is it sort of crept up on you and you haven't quite noticed it had happened. But yeah. some people have it that kind of unchecked, you know, sort of denying you have to have it at all is actually it's rooted in modesty, isn't it? Well, I've been saying, too, in some ways, it's in, in oftentimes it can be false modesty. Oh, this is all because of you. This is because of all the work that you've done, where in some ways, I think it gets back to not really understanding who you are when you're leading. And so you use that kind of that false modesty, that false, you know, this is all because of you. And it doesn't actually allow it comes across and it is inauthentic. In, in, in authentic ways when you're trying to to bring people together. If you have it, you also don't assume and understand, not only take credit for the things that you have accomplished. And I think oftentimes this is something that women leaders face, right? We've been taught to be quiet, don't be loud, don't be arrogant. You know, if we say too much, you know, we're too authoritative, we're too opinionated, we're too. So there's this idea of the ways in which we've been kind of coded to show up as a leader for the which is mostly a male dominated model. But also too, this kind of sense of making ourselves small, but at the detriment of actually moving something forward and owning the decisions, trusting our own instincts and ability to to make decisions. Right. Someone I think I shared this with you, Julia, someone shared because for me, too, I had a whole part where I really had to check like what I was hard to admit kind of felt like false modesty in a way where it's like, oh, this is due to everybody else at the expense of really like actually, too. I worked my ass off. I actually was very strategic about what we were doing, et cetera. And this idea that I think that 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 innately we have a women have a trust being able to trust and learn our own instincts as I've been talked about in previous podcasts that essence of what drives us and how we use what really forms who we are what constitutes us as, as human beings we are often trying to please or I'll speak for myself I've often in my leadership journey and learning to lead and step in and when to step out and when to step away and when to, to get out of the way was always this kind of consensus. How do I make everybody whole? How do I take everybody's idea, right? At the expense of actually moving things forward. And someone said to me, a, a colleague and someone I respect very greatly said to me the other day when we were having a discussion and he said, you know, Sarah, people will forgive you for not including them in every decision. People will not forgive you for not leading at the end of the day. And that has just been in my head around this idea of how do you create that balance? How do you create that balance and lead in a way that's authentic to you, that truly does lead with empathy and knowing who you are and bringing people together, but also not at the expense of, of death by consensus and actually not moving anything forward? Okay, got it. Got the first one unchecked. It makes a lot of sense. What's the next one? Believing that you deserve it, that you've <laughs> earned it. Yes. Yes, we all mm -hmm. know them. Mm -hmm. We all know them and that use of power, right? It's like when you stop being curious, you surround yourself by people that are, 
you know, so close to the power. They're not necessarily telling you no anymore. They're not telling you when your idea isn't good. They're not telling you when you're and you start to believe your own. Yes, you start to believe that you earned it. You deserved it. You pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. Don't see the unearned privilege and power potentially that you've been given. You're not checking how you're showing up and dialing, powering up or powering down, depending on where you are in community. And I think this is a lot of the the dominant model, that whole idea that power corrupts and how, and we'll talk, maybe we could talk a little bit about, I've been thinking a lot about how do you stay grounded? What are those keys to success? Because it's real. And I think oftentimes we're naive about it you become incredibly vulnerable to flattery. Like, I mean, all leaders are vulnerable to flattery, but you particularly vulnerable to it then. Oh, incredible. And you seek it, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is a validation. It's like the self-fulfilling prophecy. You believe you deserve it. You believe you, there's a reason that you are making all of the decisions. And then you look for reinforcements to prove your own theory and your own beliefs. I think it's it's a very dangerous place to be when you're leading. Got it. What's the next one? I'm loving this. (laughs) The third one I was thinking a lot about is that you actually, you take it for granted. You believe it's a fixed state. You believe that you've achieved some form of of power, influence, et cetera, and you waste it. So it's, it's, it's something I think in leading that, you know, you, you become and have the opportunity to lead by building trust, by building confidence, by showing humility, by that transparency when you don't get it right. How are you repairing? And I think there's often a steady state that people get to where they start to take it for granted. They waste it. They just kind of believe I've achieved this. I've got the 70 page resume. Therefore, I am a leader. And they really stop being curious. They stop questioning themselves. They think they have the answers. They think of themselves as the expert on all of the panels. I think that it's it's stunting. It's a part in leadership that is also a trap where you you believed you come to the end of your game. It's kind of that dead end moment where I think oftentimes people can, and individuals can plateau, understanding too it's a spectrum, right? I think there's probably in all of these ways where, where, it's, where it's not a steady state of how we lead. It's being able to identify when you kind of fall on this spectrum of these of these areas or kind of these ways of thinking about kind of these traps of how you use power and influence. You know, it's interesting, Sarah, while you're talking, I'm thinking, so wait a minute, uh, it's April now, isn't it? Yeah, it's April. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so in April 2023, I'm not telling you which day, I become 65. So while you've been talking, I was thinking, yeah, that's what people of 65 become. But then then I suddenly remembered, I've seen 25-year-olds hit this date. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've seen 18 year olds hit hit this date. Yep. Yep. I and it's not permanent. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about all of this thing yeah. is just as you're saying, it's a state, it's a mental state. And so it's like the when things are invisible and you don't see them, right? Then then yeah, they're unchecked, you stay in them, there's no ability. It's like these like windows of opportunity where if you can start to identify and see them, and then you can catch yourself this ability of, oh my gosh, there I go again. There I go. I just again. came in. I there I go again. I just came into that. And that it's also repairable. Once you can, this is like where that infinity sign comes back in. You can take what you learned in that moment in that state, dip back into that essence of who you are and continually grow. You come back out with another tool on your tool belt, another way to look at a situation, another way to ch- shift your mindset. Yep. You know, how can you continually be that leading? And this was one of the things that really came out of our time together in Bellagio for me that what really resonated with me with the use of power, but also influence in my own grounding is just this idea that leadership isn't a noun, it's a verb. Yeah. And that means I get to step into it. I get to step into these mind frames because they're not they're not all inherently bad either. There's a moment for them. It's just when they become the extreme form of themselves are unchecked or unexamined that can really lead you, no pun intended, right, (laughs) into these situations where you're not the best version of yourself. Talk about puns. You know, I've I've got really stuck on this word leadership. It's a ship, isn't it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not a verb. It's a ship. 
ships mm. are huge and they take they take For forever to ever. turn around. And you think about um, those big vessels. I think about yeah. I grew up in the San Juan Islands up in Washington State in the U.S. And these huge tankers coming down from Alaska and they go through these canals. And you just think, Jesus, it's going to be a hundred point turn if that yeah, sucker has to turn absolutely. around. Absolutely. But it's, the beauty it's of that, though. Of turning around at all. Yes. But the beauty of you take that analogy, though, if you take that, if the beauty is, is if you shift that huge yeah. tanker five degrees by shifting your mindset, by taking a different approach, you can radically shift the direction of it. Got it. it's, Okay, the fourth one. What's going on, Sarah? What's the fourth one? Ah, abuse it. (laughs) You use it over other people, right? It's It's a tool of power and control and you abuse it. And one of my like um, favorite and dear colleagues and friends said to me once when we were kind of talking about and thinking through And just discussing what does feminist leadership look like? What does it look like to really lead from that place? And she said to me, you know, feminist leadership isn't the absence of power. It's that you use it wisely. And that's always come back to me when I think about power. What does it actually mean to use it wisely and what people wisely? While you're talking, Sarah, I I know there's four. But I, I just wonder if there's a fifth which it, in a way it comes back to the energy concept mm. that, that actually you become mainly motivated by maintaining the energy and you mm. lose all sight that there was a purpose in having the energy. Oh, it becomes sort of, do you know what I mean? It becomes mm-hmm. everything is about maintaining the energy, maintaining my position, maintaining my power, um, mm. And I suppose the word my comes big into this, but I I get bad tempered when I'm on boards and, and I always laugh, you know, you, you use the expression, you sit on a board and that's what most people do. They sit with their ass on a board and heavily sit on it. And, mm-hmm. you know, to me, the main task, if you're on a board and you're leading a board is to remind them that we're here not to perpetuate the board or indeed to even perpetuate the organization, but actually to achieve something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that gets <laughs> lost, doesn't it? The energy it is lost. for a reason. But that's where the power, that's where power corrupts. And I think this is where we often see it also in organizations where you get huge founder syndromes. It becomes about the purpose, the person, not about the purpose. And then you build the structures and incentives, the culture of that organization around a person and their energy and their, quote, magic, which is often real, right? You get very charismatic leaders that are very good at harnessing and bringing in energy. Again, it gets back to how do you use it wisely? There's a tipping point probably in there, probably a Malcolm Gladwell tipping point in there, right, to the energy where it becomes a slippery slope. Where it becomes, again, it gets back to a little bit believing your own stuff. It you get, becomes become more the about servants you. of the energy, don't you? Yes. Rather than and, and it's craving. It's like Gollum in the in the in the cave, like that precious with the ring. <laughs> right? It's that you have to keep feeding it. It's this powerful thing. It's like this insatiable desire, this like taste of power and energy and being on top and being looked at as the expert. It's really hard to keep those roots grounded in curiosity, humility, in the network, right? It's that like mycelium. Yes, back in everything to me. Mother, everything. Yes. Nature, body, education. All comes back. Trauma, trauma even. Yeah. Yes, pain. The most big, the biggest leaps that I've made in my ability to show up and lead has been from a place of pain has been a place of deep, deep learning and self-reflection. And mostly the shit I didn't do right. I mean, I think we're also incentivized to share those successes. And, and back to your point of maintaining that, it does not leave, the system does not leave for incentives to share where you went wrong. It's to be right, make decisions, stay on top, maintain that power, And particularly for marginalized populations, it's seen as there's only, there's, as you said, there's only two spots on the board anyway. So, you know, it's like, 
the only there's oh, there's a scarcity mentality to it too that there's a scarcity of power and energy and resources and so it leads to a certain type of behavior it leads to kind of hoarding maintaining building your own fiefdom building your own building yourself up because in some ways like i think you and i joked about it it's survival and i think oftentimes there's this you know we're going to empower we're going to create leaders but we're still putting them in it's like you and i joked it's like it's still bringing teddy bears to a gunfight you know in this in this sense of like how do we equip ourselves to understand it's not all beautiful roses they're amazing in it so how do you build that ecosystem of support to keep you grounded and connected but that in itself is quite interesting isn't it because you've said you need to understand yourself and you need the right people around you and the truth is yeah. that the system will begin to gaslight you so that you don't yeah. understand yourself yep. and the system is quite or they'll tell likely. you you're wrong that yeah. you're what you're what you're that you you start to feel crazy you're exactly right absolutely and then the system will also let's come back to hunger games will pitch you against even your greatest of friends yep because there's only so much space up there yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's so why again do you think do you like, think leadership do you think leading is good for your health then no depends again i would say leading was terrible for my health for certain periods of my life i think until one because i bought into the game that was one of the other things that i was thinking about like what are what are the things that i've learned is just know the game it's once i understood the game i was playing what those incentives were like right and again it's also a privilege to be able to say i'm not playing <laughs> like like recognizing that too is also a huge privilege because most people don't have the option to say it's just actually surviving right it's it's making yourself small or creating mechanisms but i think you know recognizing the game right understanding what those incentives are because there is an opportunity like we were talking about to build that network of 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 individuals around you who do have a different or are more often in a different mindset which are actively doing and building that muscle of leading in a different way and finding those individuals and, and and figuring out those points of connection and building that as you've often talked about that kind of that proverbial well <laughs> of leading where you you have this sisterhood of hey i i fell in that pothole <laughs> i've been there in my career i've had that have to have that really challenging conversation with the board here are some tools here's what i've learned and to really have that ability to share and and have that ability of connection is is key because i do think it's incredibly isolating it's incredibly lonely and i think you are constantly gaslit and you're constantly told not to trust your instincts the model but, is but, head up but, yep but there is nothing more fun there's nothing more well, I suppose there are a few things that are more profound or equally profoundly satisfying than yep. when that, when you're leading a group of people and it is pure energy mm -hmm. and you are achieving something that is worth achieving. Mm -hmm. That's it's electric. It's completely electric, and that's why it's not that bad for your health. It's just that you have moments of the beauty, and then some pretty tough moments as you get to it. But leadership done well at the right time in the right place, there's almost nothing can beat it. I think I'm struggling a little bit. Again, depends on how we're defining it, right? Because I feel it, it's not a steady state. So I think being able to acknowledge and understand back again, it seems like we keep going back to the essence and, and understanding and that continual learning and, and evolving, that evolution part of it. But it, it, it gets at being able to identify when it becomes unhealthy, when you're in one of those mindsets where you're you know, when you're not leaning on community and you're isolating yourself and you start to believe that you're the only one that can solve this instead of 
the ways in which you show up in community and leading together and figuring out how you best channel your gifts, your your the, the things that you really do excel at. That's when that electricity happens is when you can actually you understand your both your superpowers and you understand your kryptonite. And you've been able to build this kind of web of, of individuals that you're leading towards a purpose, right? That I can see it as like nodes lighting up on a, on a map, right? You, that is pure bliss. That is the best parts of it. I think that's why, you know, that's, that's, that's like the, 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 you know, the, the ultimate state. And you're right. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that feeling. And it's that deep, deep sense of commitment, connection, and that looking around being like, we did it. We right? did and it. I, we did it. Not I did it. Look what we did. We did. That is, we that, did that's it. it. But let's not forget. Let's remember your first one. We mm-hmm. did it. And the tiny little bit of I did it too. I did it too. And that's the part where I, I was really hot. was a big aha for me. It was like, this is false humility of what I'm doing, which was so hard for me to admit. But it was like, yeah, and I did it too. And this part wouldn't have happened if I did not do that part. But it goes back again to also understanding myself, which was also letting go of the things that I wasn't good at or somebody within my ecosystem, within my community was way better at. So, and but that that takes understanding yourselves and letting go, right? And that to me is also such an important um, ability when you when you start to really when you get that essence and that dipping into using that energy correctly, you start to really understand and you can let go, and that is also electric. So it's the um, it's uh, Sarah, I we both could have predicted the sheer number of metaphors that would happen once you and I started (laughs) talking. (laughs) But the truth is that the final metaphor is this, this huge energy, this huge infinity sign swinging around and then it's back anchored into essence. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's, that's when you get it right, isn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you have, I think we often lead with empathy and have grace for others, but also in that, at the, in that true essence, you have grace for yourself because you're going to F up. You're going to, it's not all, you know, you, you have to be able to understand. You and I have talked about it too. It was, it's really, it was really hard for me to also to understand. Or it was a big learning for me, a big curve that I couldn't make other people whole. I wasn't responsible for other people's emotions. And that also just came too because of the sense of like, well, if I I can't get everybody around the table or if so-and-so doesn't like me, then I failed. And this idea too of that for me was a huge lesson in all of this of of energy. It was like, I don't actually, I don't, I don't need to be liked. I really want to be respected. <laughs> I wish I would have had that in my 20s. I wish I would have had that ability to to, to reflect and, and, and have that and show up in that way. But and it's because right of that when you start to get that 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 power, there's this giving yourself grace that you're not always going to get it right. And that, yeah, it was huge for me. Huge for all of us. Thank you, Sarah. They, <laughs> hurdles is too nice a word for them, really, isn't it? They are sort of cliffs we have to avoid and recognise that it's possible to avoid them. And in fact, it's possible to go off the cliff and still keep going and to get back up onto the top of the cliff and keep going. These are things that you can always turn around. It's interesting, isn't it? I remember years ago having long conversations with my mother-in-law that were so disastrous. We got on so badly for the first 10 years of my, our marriage. Everything was pretty awful. I'm sure I didn't behave right and I'm pretty sure she didn't behave right. We got off to a bad start and we continued and for 10 years they were sort of lost. 
But it is extraordinary how you can come back from the brink and reframe yourself. I think I've mentioned it before, women emerging actually emerged from those two or three months where my husband and I cared for my mother-in-law as she slowly died. And I remember just how close we'd been after those 10 years were over, when we'd come back from the brink and we'd become so close, close to the extent that I was holding her hand at the end. I think it's it's so important when we're leading to remember that there are such horrible cliffs that you can go off, but you can pull yourself back from them. And there are sort of roads you can go down and lose sight of your essence, but you can actually come back and reframe yourself. I think I did with my mother-in-law, I and she absolutely, certainly did. Don't believe anybody who says that they're too old to change. It's not true. She did. And it was a remarkable and, and glorious thing to see. It's a, a lovely expression that Sarah uses, that you give yourself grace. Give yourself grace that you're not always going to get it right. I think that's a rather beautiful expression that will stick with me from now on. So Alia was last week. The week before that was Liz. This week is Sarah. Next week is Uma. And she also talks about energy. And I think she's sort of the embodiment of the link between energy and essence. She starts talking about something she once said to me, which was that women need to claim the power, their power, in its purest sense. Come back next week if you want to find out more. I certainly did. In the meantime, lots of love, Julia. To become part of our movement and share your thinking with us, subscribe to the podcast and join the Women Emerging group on our website at womenemerging.org. We love all of the messages you send us. Keep them coming.